this video we want to talk about cruises, some issues with cruise ships for medicine because we've had a lot of patients coming in that are getting ready to go on cruises for the summer. Uh, so we thought we'd just talk a few minutes about some of the issues for cruises. Uh, the first thing that a lot of people don't understand is if you have an American insurance plan uh, that is not a type F or, or, or even type F some of them uh, and especially Medicare, all right, once you get outside 200 miles outside of the U.S. border on a ship, it is most of the insurances are no longer cover you unless you've bought special travel insurances. So that's the first thing that's important, all right, is if you're going to, like for instance, if you're going to be traveling up to Alaska, all right, if you're in Vancouver uh, and you have a problem, you're stuck, all right. Uh, if once you get into the Alaskan part of the inside passage, there's no problem. But typically in American waters, all right, 200 miles out, you will be covered, but not, not in any other jurisdiction, all right. Uh, number two is uh, ships are actually have amazing medical facilities on them, all right? It's actually, they're like little ICUs, all right? It's amazing what they can do, uh, but there's several issues that are important for uh, that, and that's the first thing is the cost, all right? It just, you can spend a pile of money if you don't have insurance or your insurance will not be covered, and it can, it, it can ruin, the, <laughs> ruin the cruise, all right? The next thing is how to avoid getting into troubles on the cruise, all right? Number one is uh, we strongly recommend avoiding running on the decks and doing, uh, doing wild things that are sort of uh, at risk kind of thing, especially for our older patients. Number two, a, a very important thing, you want especially, uh, but many, many patients at the end of the cruise, after about four to five or six days, end up with their feet swelling and a lot of just fatigue. And what happens for is that cruise food, uh, the, the food in the cruise ships is just heavily salt loaded. There's just a massive amount of salts. There's hidden salt that you don't realize is on, on the food. And so when you get this high salt load, especially if you have any kidney problems or any congestive heart failure issues, uh, in fact, you can go into congestive heart failure or um, exacerbate your renal failure. But even people without that, all right, who are not on diuretics, uh, literally can get into troubles with too much fluid overload because of the massive amounts of salt on the food. And that is especially true if you're black, all right? Uh, the blacks seem to have a more of a uh, propensity to sort of uh, be susceptible to salt and their hypertension. So the first thing is try to avoid or pick foods that are, are not, uh, eat more salads, things like that, that don't have a lot of, of salt in them. Uh, the next issue that we find uh, it, that happens with people on cruise ships is they end up overdoing themselves on excursions. Uh, this is sort of a once in a lifetime uh, thing and they paid for these uh, excursions and they get themselves in trouble. You want to make sure if you have limited mobility that you pick excursions where you don't overdo yourself, all right? Because uh, essentially you can do too much kind of thing. Most people don't think of that when they're booking their uh, tours, but strongly encourage you to think of that when you're booking your tours. The other thing that's important for on the cruise ships is uh, motion sickness medicine, all right? Uh, like I just saw a patient that's going up uh, from Seattle up into uh, to Alaska on the inside passage. There is very little open water. There's only about 20 miles of open water uh, up th uh, there that's uh, sort of a little bit rough. But so there's not as much trouble with uh, motion sickness. But let's talk about motion sickness. All right. Number one is uh, you can use Dramamine. Uh, you can use uh, Meclizine. Over the counter you can buy it. Uh, uh, it's uh, in Bonine, B-O-N-N-I-N-E, is how it's called, generic called uh, in America. In Canada, it's called Gravol, G-R-A-V-O-L, all right? Uh, it's really generic uh, uh, meclizine. The issues with it, it works very, very well. Some people can get sleepy with it. You usually, uh, over the counter, you can buy only 6.25 or 12.5 milligrams. It typically takes 25 to 50 milligrams, up to three times a day to be really effective if you have bad motion sickness issues. 
The second thing is you cannot drink alcohol with a smile because you'll get too, uh, it'll be, uh, t too tired and your other things will happen and you, it's easier to injure yourself, all right? Uh, but you can, like if you went up to uh, Canada or uh, North America, anywhere along a cruise ship, and you had trouble, in fact, you probably buy the Meclizine on board, all right, in the, in the store on the, on the ship. There are other medicines that work well, actually very, very well, uh, for uh, motion sickness on the ships. One of them is uh, transdermal scopolamine. They're a little patch you put behind your ear. They're quite expensive, by the way, but they work like magic, all right? You have to put them on the day before you cruise, all right, for them to work because it takes time to build up in your bloodstream. And if you have any eye issues like uh, glaucoma, you cannot, you don't want to use them. In fact, the lady I saw, saw today, she has not diagnosed glaucoma yet, but their pressures are a little bit high. She wanted the, the, uh, that medicine. I said, no, we're not going to do that, all right? Because it's not worth that risk, because if you end up with a glaucoma attack on board, it's just, it's, it's a potential mess.